back to Thumb FPV. Now today we are going to get the Sky Stars long range mini quad here all set up in beta flight and ready to get out for its first test flight. There are going to be a few things that we have to do though. We have to update the flight controller, configure it, also go in and do the ESC calibration and then update the ESCs and make sure that everything is spinning the correct way. So First things first, let's jump right into the tabs. We have our beta flight open here. We'll go ahead and connect the drone. Warning, the following problem with your configurations were detected. The accelerator, accelerometer is enabled but not calibrated. If you plan to use the accelerometer, please follow the instructions for calibrate accelerometer on the setup tab. If any function that requires the accelerometer, auto levels, GPS rescue is enabled, arming the craft will be disabled until the accelerometer has been calibrated. If you are not planning on using the accelerometer, it is recommended that you disable it. System configurations on the configuration tab. Please fix these problems before attempting to fly your craft. Okie dokie. Not a problem. So, first things first I'm going to do before I start messing with anything is I'm going to want to go ahead and update the flight controller. So we have it plugged in and most of the times you can easily tell what you want your update to be to because if you go to your target we have SKST forward slash sky stars F405 and then in parentheses um, we have our STM 32 F405 so with that being said I'm going to just simply take a quick picture of that my phone for a reminder boom I'm gonna go to our CLI tab type in BL hit enter now we are in DFU mode Click the update. And these are not the settings that we want. So real quick, I'm going to look for what did it say? We need our SKST. I think they may have given us a little too much info on that, but check it out. Down to the S's. We go Sky Stars F405. We also have the ST STM32 F405. And then when I was looking on Get FPV to see what they had said for the flight controller, it said that it is running. STM 32 F405 RGT6. Which I do not see. But I'm going to trust the first part of this and I'm just going to go with the Sky Stars. five that is not the right one there we go release candidates go to the newest that is correct release and candidate and reboot sequence we're going to load firmware firmware has loaded. 505,943 bytes flash most of the time 
they really don't have to do this, but this is a brand new build, so who knows how long the flight controller's been sitting around. It did look that everything had been already the newest on there ahead of time, but it doesn't hurt to double check it. So in just a second, this is going to be done. There it is. All right. So, programming successful. Going to reconnect the drone. There are custom defaults for this board available. Normally, a board will not work properly unless these custom defaults are applied. Do you want to apply the custom defaults for this board? Yes. Our accelerometer tab has popped back up again. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Just to get it out of the way. Okay. That is done. Now let's go to our ports tabs. VTX has not been set up correctly, and without VTX control, it will not be possible. Please set up the VTX and the VTX table. Yes, we will do that in a minute. All right, so I'll double check what we got going on right here, and we'll get these tabs up. So, as I stated in the last video about setting up the flight controller, um, the serial receiver is on R4, so we're going to need to change this. Save and reboot it. Now we're going to come down to UART 5. And this is for our, should be over here, peripherals. Nope, sensors. Our GPS here. Okay, um, BTX is over here on TBS Smart Audio. That has not been set up yet. So we're going to disable that for now. Head VTX TBS Audio on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to the OSD because that's the signal that I had selected for that. It may not be right. I'm not familiar with this flight controller. We'll double check it though at the end of this. So we're going to save and reboot this. Drop down to configuration. This is a quad X, correct? Um, skip over the ESC part for a minute. Accelerometer's been enabled and calibrated, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because we don't need it. We actually don't need any of these. This is already set to S bus. So that is all set. For the most part, we don't need anything else on there. So power and battery that we can skip over for now. We don't have anything to do with that. Um, what does this come with stock pids? Let's see. Yeah. It's not horrible. Mid 40s on average for proportional. Mid 85 to 90 on integral. Mid 30s for the D max. Mid 20s for the D min. Feed forward, low 90, mid 90s. This is all default here. See where our rates are at. 
Not bad. Here, default filtering. Okay. Everything seems to check out okay. For the receiver. Now, the next part, well, we're going to skip that because I'm just getting this set up for right now. That'll be the binding part of it. Uh, let's see. Modes. How do we want our modes? Let's try to stick with the conventional way that I have shown in the bind and fly process. So, add range, aux1, save that. Rise and head free. Let's see what we need here. I did not see the acro mix, so we're just going to add an angle mix here. Do not need two of them. Alright, so we're going to make that aux 2. We should have our beeper. Make this aux three. Or turtle mode. Ox four. And we'll take our camera control. Keep hitting the wrong button. <laughs> Aux 5, use that on the high end as well, and save. So our switches are enabled. Now let's do a motor check real quick. Okay, so we're going to plug the battery into the drone here real quick. One of the motors is turning all by itself and it does keep beeping. It's really weird, but I'm going to go over here and try to see if the motors do work. And they do. Let's see. One is spinning counterclockwise, two is spinning counterclockwise, three is spinning clockwise, and four is spinning counterclockwise. So a little bit of changing around in VL Heli there. We're literally going to have to change motor direction one, three, and four. That's pretty much all I was checking. And to make sure that the ESCs were working properly. So I went back through and I double checked everything and what I came up with was that the tab for VTX did not mean that that was the signal. Um, I went ahead and I jumped it over 
if you're looking at the flight controller pinout pad with the arrow facing to the left, your VTX pad is on the very bottom on the left. I took it and I moved it over one space to the right and I put it on T6. Now why they would have that there, if that's not actually going to do anything, I don't know, but we're going to try something out. So I have this back on TBS Smart Audio. Now we're going to come down to our video transmitter. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so let's see, there's a, here we go, at the top. If you configure the values for your video transmitter, you can change them, change the transmission values, including VTX tables, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we do not have this set up yet. So what we have to do is we have to go over here and we have to click on this page. I don't know if this is going to pop up. My computer has a problem with that sometimes. So I'm going to click this and then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to start recording again to see if that'll work. So now that we have selected it from the file, we're just simply going to come down here and hit load from clipboard. This will all pop up. Now your VTX tables are ready. We're going to hit save. That is saved. LEDs, we don't really need to do anything with that right now. CLI tab, we don't really need anything to do with that. So as far as this part of Betaflight goes, I'm going to get this wrapped up and I'm just going to jump over to be a heli and get everything switched out and updated over there and then we'll continue okay so a couple quick touch up things in here we got to do um we have to go to our configuration before i forget to do this Okay, so for board and sensor alignment, we need this to be, right now it's at 180 degree. We're going to put it at zero. Save and reboot. I should reorient the flight controller to bring it back around uh, the 180 degrees. Now we need to go to our motors and see exactly what we're working with here because we have to resource the motors. So as you can see right here, motor 1 is B07, motor 2 is B06, motor 3 is B04, motor 4 is B03. So I'm going to take and get those flipped around here real quick. So the way this is set up means everything is just 180 degree flip. Uh, 2 becomes 3, 3 becomes 2, 1 becomes 4, 4 becomes 1. It's pretty simple. So uh, you say resource motor one and that's going to become b03 pull this back up resource Motor four to be zero seven. Resource motor two to be zero four.
resource motor three to B zero six. Okay, now that should be complete. Let's save. Go back in and double check. Okay, so motor one is at B03, motor four is at B07, motor three is at B06. And motor 2 is at B04. Looks good so far. Alright, so we'll go back out to the motors tab. Just double check and make sure that everything worked correctly. Once we get the proper ESC configuration in here, that will stop. Alright, so all four motors do spin. Let's check these individually. Motor 1 is correct. Motor 2 is correct. Motor 3 is correct. And motor 4 is correct. So that worked fine. All the motors are good. Everything has been resourced. We have our flight controller flipped around and everything is good. Video transmitter has been enabled. And the last thing that we have to do is just double check real quick. We have to go back to the configuration to make sure that our flip oh, accelerator accelerometer is back on. I thought I'd turn that off. Disconnect the battery though. So in our configuration tab, the accelerometer is on. We'll go back up to our setup here. I just want to double check and make sure that the drone is facing the right direction. I have it tipped in the proper angle for the arrow to be facing forward, so the flip on the drone did work, at least for the flight controller. So everything up to this point is a okay. Uh, I'm going to go over in the next section on this exactly what I went through and how I did it to configure, well not configure, but I'm going to be deleting that too. In the next part of this, I'm going to show you how to flash the ESCs. It was a little tricky. Uh, I did have some help from a friend. Big shout out to Colin. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for that. I'm going to show you how to get the ESCs flashed on here. Once you have BL Heli Suite loaded, um, you're going to want this very specific version right here. It's BL Heli 16.7.14.9.0.2.0.1. Okay, that when you go to the download file of this, there's actually an A at the end of that as well. But this is what you're going to want to configure your ESC with. So once you have this opened up, it's not going to initially work. Um, in order for this to work with this specific build and other builds, not just this one, uh, you'll have to go to the uh, select ATM LEL Scilabs interface. You want to come all the way down here and you want to select option E for the Scilabs BL Heli bootloader and you want to select the clean flight version of it. Now once you click on that, you will be able to connect but you will not be able to connect until then. And this also is going to pop up, but this does not have the auto detect on it like most BO helis do. Uh, you will ha actually have to drop down and you will have to select your COM port if it's not popping up automatically. Once you're in here though, it's pretty straightforward. 
Um, you're going to want to connect once your battery is plugged into the drone. You're going to want to read your setup. And then once all four of your ESCs are detected down here, then you're going to want to go through and flash it. Just follow the normal process like you would with any other ESC. But this one was a little different getting everything set up and ready for it to go. So I just thought I'd share that about this real quick. To prevent the motors from spinning up as soon as it gets plugged in, we have to go into our configuration here. And all we're going to do is simply take and drop our D-Shot 600 down to 125. Save and reboot. And I'm going to plug the drone in here real quick. And as you can hear, there's no multi beeps, there's no spinning, anything. So the little glitchiness for the ESCs has been taken care of. That's it for this video. This is Thumb FPV. Thanks for watching this. I'll have another one up soon.